interested in playing gigs as a guitar player, playing professionally, making some money, playing out in the world, then this video is for you. For many years, I played a ton of gigs on the guitar to make a living. I always have been teaching, but for a while, I was making a good portion of my money from playing gigs, playing professionally, getting paid to play, and I learned a lot of things along the way. So for this video, I'm gonna give you my top 10 tips for if you are interested in playing professionally as a guitarist, specifically to make some money. This music that you're hearing right now from the intro of this video, this little arrangement of Don't Think Twice, It's All Right by Bob Dylan, I just played this at a gig last week. I actually just looped the chords with this extremely basic loop pedal and then played the melody over it, improvised over it, did that with just a handful of songs to fill up a couple hours of music at an event, got paid well, they fed me, came home, had a good day of playing music, and this is my favorite type of gig in terms of playing professionally and you know trying to make some money doing it. I do make a distinction between gigs and shows. I'm really talking about gigs and the best kind are like background music gigs at events. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on here. I've played a lot of different types of professional performances. Some of them pay really well, some of them really, really do not. So if you're playing like a show at a venue where you want your friends to come and you know, watch your band, that's a whole different deal, you know, it's a whole different ball game, you know, trying to establish yourself as an artist. I'm really talking about just, can you can you go play guitar somewhere and get paid for it? So I've played, you know, in, in tribute bands and wedding bands and played classical guitar at weddings and played in cafes where like no one's there <laughs> listening and uh, played duos, trios, quartets, played at bars, restaurants, stuff like that. And over the years, I just kind of, started getting a sense of what is the right type of gig for me that I actually want to do and that also you know pays well and is worth doing. So I'm going to give you some advice related to all of that here. Uh, my favorite type of gig, gig is an actual event, like usually with like an event planner because they, they have a good budget for it. And it's usually background music because you can kind of just do whatever you want. So I'm going to kind of talk about it in that context, but all of these tips will apply to almost any kind of professional gig that you want to do. Make sure you stick around for the end because the main takeaway from all of this is very, very encouraging if you're interested in playing gigs at all. So make sure you check out the whole list and stick around for the end. Tip number one for playing professionally on the guitar, making money, playing gigs. This is the most important thing I want to get across in this video. So I'm putting it first. We have to wrap our heads around this, feel good about it to take advantage of any of the other tips. And it really is that to play professionally, you don't have to feel like you're that good of a musician, really. Like you don't have to sound that amazing. We don't really, to, to, to put it in a way that I think makes the most sense, we don't have to sound as good as we think we need to sound to play professionally. We think of this concept of like a professional musician. Whoa, like that, that's a really serious, really amazing musician. And I get that. I totally get that. And and really, it's this kind of chicken and egg thing, because if you get out there and start playing a bunch, you're going to excel so much more at music because you have an outlet for it. Something I talked about recently, uh, having an outlet for music is going to make us uh, skyrocket our skills. But also, you're, you're, you're going to have pressure. You're going to practice for it seriously. So if you do that for 10 years, you will be one of these professional musicians that people say, whoa, oh my gosh, you're a professional, like you must be so good. But at first, we need to know that it's not about being good at music, really. You need to sound decent enough. You need to be able to play something. But 
being a professional musician playing, you know, gigs for money, you're playing for people that aren't musicians. So the professional part is not the like, I'm so skilled at music part. The professional part is how you behave professionally. This is the most important thing to do this really so all, as soon as you can play some music and sound okay for, you know, some span of time, the rest of it is just being professional. Okay. So obviously being on time, communicating really well, um, not bringing a bad mood to the, to the gig, you know, actually smiling, you know, making sure th these are just things I picked up over time. I played a gig a long time ago that, um, it was, it was a great gig and I was playing some really hard stuff because I wanted to play really, really serious music and I was like focusing so hard and I wasn't not having fun, but I wasn't having fun. I was like, I was like really trying to rehearse some, you know, difficult guitar stuff. The, the booker of the gig came up to me and I was in between pieces of music and she was like, are you having fun? Like she, she, and then later she was like, it seemed like you weren't you know, having a good time. It's just because I was so focused and serious and they never hired me again. <laughs> I never got hired again from them. And they're like, uh, they were like a big event planner that I, that they're doing events all the time and they didn't hire me again because I didn't bring a vibe that seemed fun for the people. It was like a big party. There were people everywhere. And I like, I was like mm, sitting there like concentrating on super hard music. So I learned a few things from that. One being you could, you don't have to play hard music. You can play really, really simple stuff and like you should smile and seem like you're having fun and that will actually help you actually have fun. So these are just professional things. Um, you know, there's one gig that I played consistently with a, with a saxophone player. We were a bossa nova duo. We played this for this one event planner all the time. It was a good money. One time we were late. Never again. Now, like we were relying on this gig. We were late one time because of crazy traffic in Seattle and we got, and you know, we were still trying to be as professional as we could, but that was it. Like no more, no more of that gig. So showing up on time, being professional, being kind, being grateful, communicating well, being personable, even if that's hard, like I'm a super introvert, I'm a super homebody, but I will look someone in the eye, smile, you know, say, make sure I say thanks for having me. If, if you want to be professional, if you want to, you know, get the gig again for this type of gig, again, we're not talking about Miles Davis here. We're not talking about being an artist where like you, maybe it's, you don't want to compromise your artist persona by, by smiling and, you know, do, doing a showmanship thing, but for making money, doing it at, you know, some sort, whatever the event is or whatever the, the service is that you're providing, you are providing a service. And most of what you're providing is just the fact that you brought music and the people there, like they need to feel like, oh, there's music here. They don't, they're not thinking like, this is how, how good or bad is this music, right? Maybe a couple people, but for the most part, it's like, oh, nice. There's music here. It's just like an environment thing. So you're just providing that. So that's all tip number one. I just like, that could be a video of its own, right? The professional part is not how good you sound. It's how professional you are. And here's an added tip here. That's not on the rest of the list, which is like place play easy stuff, play stuff that's not hard for you. Do what's easy. I used to play these solo guitar gigs and like really try to play solo guitar. And then I just started using a loop pedal and I had so much more fun and it sounded better. People liked it more. I was able to just relax and smile and have fun and get paid better and everything. So that's a little bonus tip that it wasn't on the list. Let's go to tip number two. Tip number two is that you only need about two hours of music to start doing this really seriously. And the music just needs to sound like music. That sounds so funny and weird to say. It just needs to be decent enough just for someone to be like, oh, there's music here, right? Just like we talked about. That's just to get your foot in the door. You're, you're going to sound better and better over time if you start doing this. But you need about two hours of music and, you know, possible that you'll eventually want to stretch to having about three hours of it. Um, and depending on what you're doing, like the way I do it often now, because it's the most fun for me, using the loop pedal and improvising over it. In that last gig, I played for over two hours. I only played like five songs because I was <laughs> just improvising over some of them for so long and being like, oh, all this time passed and I was just having fun. So it could be if you're improvising, you can stretch them out. If you're playing little arrangements or depending on what, you know, what your thing is, you might need more, but just can you fill up two hours? That's tip number two. Let's go to tip number three. Tip number three, this is kind of a, a funny one, but it's an important tip and that's that you can repeat music, right? So the two hours thing, like if you need it, if you, if someone says, oh, can you play longer? Just repeat stuff. It's the same kind of concept where like, is me, you know, it's okay. 
even if people notice that you're repeating it, they don't care. They're like, oh, they're playing that one again. Nice. It's like a playlist is going on and songs repeat all the time. Songs repeat on the radio like crazy. And they do that on purpose because people enjoy music more when they're more familiar with it. When they, when you've heard it, when your brain has kind of processed it and you hear it again and again and again, you get more kind of reward, you know, good fuzzy feelings from it by hearing something again. So you can just shamelessly play the same music again. Make sure you try to shoot for that two hour mark, but that you have total, but if you need to stretch it, you can repeat stuff. Or if you feel like some of that is a little rougher than others and you have a few really confident pieces, just play the set again, play it for an hour, play, you know, play again. Um, that's totally fine, especially as you're on your way learning how to do this more consistently. It's not going to ruin a gig to do that. And you can take note of it later and say, ah, I better add a few you know, pieces to my repertoire. Tip number four, this one's super important. Just know that gigs beget more gigs. You know, gigs induce getting more gigs. This sounds like a really good thing, but be super, super careful with it. Okay, whatever type of gig you play, you are an advertisement as you're doing that for playing that type of gig. And people are going to see you, hear you, maybe people you play with or whatever, and they're going to think, hmm, maybe I should, you know, hire you for my thing or some. So, don't say yes to types of gigs that you don't want to do. Don't think of it as, oh, this will pay a little bit. And when, once that's done, I'll do what I want to do. I highly, highly recommend that you think ahead of time. We're kind of setting up a little business here, right? Think ahead of time. Like, what do I offer and do, you know, do I want to spend my time doing that? And the best way to do this is to think of what you love to practice. I talk about pra practicing is the funnest part, in my opinion. My favorite part about playing gigs is practicing for it. That's my favorite part. So I talk about practicing so much on this channel. It's like the, the best part of all this is the learning and the practice. And the gig is like this excuse to work towards something that's extremely rewarding. And hey, got to pay the bills, right? So think of what would I love to be forced to work on? What would I just, what do I wish I could wake up and work on and practice? Okay, well, what's a gig that is going to force me to do more of that? So for me, it's like, okay, I love just working on song, learning songs and then imp and learning how to improvise over them and try to hit the chord changes right. And okay, can I do that? The only type of gigs I do now are these background gigs where it's just me and I just do a loop pedal. I can just sit, I bring like a little Fender Blues Junior amp and my telly and a loop and I can just be in a corner. Like events love it because I can fit anywhere. And I've just decided and defined for myself, like that's what I want to do. It's easiest. It's fun. I, I love practicing for it. Um, if someone reaches out to me for almost any other type of gig right now, I'm going to, I'm going to say, no, I don't do that. Right. I used to, and it used to be this maybe way to prove to myself that I could do various things. Um, and there's, you know, getting a lot of experience doing those things can be beneficial, but think in the long game, if you played the, a gig, like think of it this way. If someone asked you to play a gig, imagine you say yes to it and imagine that that gig spawned 10 other gigs, right? Are you going to do that 10 more times? Are you going to be like, yes, awesome. I got to do this again and again and again and again and again. Okay. So just be careful because whatever gig you play, you want it to feel like, oh, maybe someone else is going to ask me to do the same thing instead of the feeling. And I had this so many times where I'm like, I just want this to be over with. I can't wait this. I can't wait to get my paycheck so I can go back and practice the stuff I want to play instead of doing this stuff. Okay. So that's tip number four. Tip number five is that if you think you're not ready for this, which is going to be the normal feeling for most of us, if you think you're not ready, please start doing it as soon as possible before you're ready. You're never going to feel ready. So if you know, if you know you want to make some money playing gigs, start getting in there, getting your foot in the door and doing it as soon as possible. Let it be scary. Let it be uncomfortable. You're going to learn the most by doing that. If you practice for 10 more years, you're still not going to feel ready enough until you jump in and just do it. So if you can make some decent music at all, and you try to get up to that two hours of music and it sounds okay, it sounds like music and you know, you want to play and you need to make a little money, start doing this as soon as possible. And I got a couple more tips that will help you know, get the word out for it, but don't wait until you think you're ready. That's not going to happen. If you know you want to do it, do it as soon as possible and let yourself be scared. That's okay. Tip number six, this is very much where we're thinking of it as starting a business because we are, we're trying to make money playing guitar. And I'm telling you stuff that is going to make you stand out from a lot of the musicians out there that are just like, oh, I'm a musician. Like I'll just say yes to anything and just play Sure, I'll show up and play for $5 or I'll show up and play for hopefully it's more and I'll do this kind. 
you know, if that's right for you, that's fine. But I want to help you have kind of a, a, a stable and clean operation, even if you just play a couple gigs a year. What we should do is decide every detail of what our operation looks like. Just like if you're opening a restaurant, right? You wouldn't just willy nilly have a space and say, cool, I got a space. And someone comes in and says, I'm hungry. And they say, cool, what do you want? I can make anything. And they say, oh, I don't know. How about like they, people don't even usually know what they want. So the more things you can decide, the more professional you come across. So are you going to travel a certain distance and cut it off after, after a certain di distance? Do you charge more after that? Like these should be things that are concrete. Not that you can't change them, but have it at any point. Say, this is how I do it. And side note about this, it people love it because they don't want to make decisions. You don't say, what do you want me to do? I'll do anything. I'll go anywhere. I'll play anything. Just say, no, this is what I do. Do you want that or not? Uh, so e every detail of kind of how you do it, what you offer, what you don't offer. Um, and that ha that goes for a price, you know, set up what you need, what your needs are. This is the kind of thing that will make you stand out in this, you know, from tip number one, be professional, behave professionally, um, just have all of these decisions figured out, and then tweak them over time as you as you do them. This is uh, really, really helpful. So you're not on the fly. Oh, should I take this? Should I not take this? This random thing, this random thing. Say, no, this is what I want to do. I know I want to do it from the other tip already where you decided you want to spend your time practicing this kind of music. You see how it can build on itself this way. Let's go to the next tip. Tip number seven is just a mindset thing that you should, with everything, with all those decisions you made, with every interaction, you should be confident. Okay. Even if you're faking it, fake your confidence. While you're there, if you if you think you sound like the worst you've ever played, don't let that show, right? Because I promise people don't notice it at all. And if you look scared, like you're not, you know, like you're having a horrible time, they won't hire you again. Just like I had, you know, my, my story about when I was focusing so hard trying to play well, that's not what they want, right? So be confident every step of the way. If you get asked a question about, um, you know, what you offer or what your rates are, even if you're, you're, it's your first gig, be confident and say, this is what I charge, or I usually do things this way. And that's not dishonest, really. It's the same thing as a rest the restaurant analogy again. Say they have the menu and they say, we serve these things, but no one's come yet. The first customer, they're going to say, yes, we, we serve these things. This is, this is what you can get. Even if they haven't served it yet, it's going to happen for the first time. So when you make these decisions before they even happen, you can be confident about saying, this is how I do it. And that attitude automatically is more value. It has a higher value for people actually hiring music, event planners, restaurants, whatever. They want to know, oh, cool. You know what you're doing. You know what your worth is. Uh, you're easy to work with. You're confident. You're not scared about this. They don't want to worry about any of that. They have other stuff to do. They just want, I need music. They need music. You're going to provide it. Pretend, just fake it till you make it. Be confident and that confidence will come and be natural eventually. Tip number eight is about specifically what you charge. This is kind of built into the one where I say decide everything ahead of time, but I want to say it on its own. Have your rates concrete, have them decided upon, and you can always raise them. You could even lower them, but at any given time say, this is what I charge for this type of service. Again, this, and I'm, you, a lot of people do this in different ways, but I believe you will get more work if you have that and you have it listed publicly. Okay. So if you have, and we'll talk about that in, in the next tip where to list it publicly, but make sure that you have rates that are locked in and just have it be really clear. A good system that I used for a long time is I would have like a minimum. So I'd be like a flat rate for up to a certain amount of time. Right. And you could, you can charge, I mean, it depends on where, what city you're in too, but I could charge 300 bucks for up to the first two hours and then a hundred dollars an hour after that. And you can change that however you want. 400 bucks for the first two hours, hundred after that, $50 for the first two hours, 25 per hour after that, um, you know, extra if I'm going out of this, you know, vicinity or something like that, just have it so concretely defined. Cause again, people love this and they will pay you more if you do that. And if you have it listed publicly too, so they can say, do I want this service? How much is it? Oh, now I'm going to think about that. And even if someone's charging less, the fact that you charge whatever you do and you do it confidently and it's listed there, it, it allows people to know what they're, uh, what they're hiring for, right? Instead of someone that says, reach out to me and let me know if you're interested, like 
if someone has that on their website and you have your rates listed very concretely and they're even like high rates, that's way more appealing because then they can say, great, I know that I'm going to get this. So that's what I believe is the, is the best way to go is have your rates really clear, have them there. And this brings us to the next tip, tip number nine, which is have a website. Okay. If you want to do this seriously, you don't have to do all of these tips. You don't, to, you don't have to, but if you do all of them, you're going to make amazing progress, make some money, get better at music, get paid to play, get paid to practice. You want to have a website that's dedicated to this service. Don't just have a link tree. Don't just have your Instagram account. Don't just have your Facebook page. Don't have a website that says, I'm this person that plays guitar. And also I do woodworking and also this, and also this reach out if you're interested in anything, nothing will ever happen if you do it that way. Okay. So you might be interested in a million things or even a million styles of music. Let's say you're playing, you know, metal guitar and classical guitar and jazz and whatever. And you're, you know, you're just loving all of it. That's like how I feel about things. I'm doing all these different things, but if you want to make money playing gigs, have a website that narrows it down to one thing and say, the point of this website is not to advertise me as a guitar player. Who's interested in all these things, telling my life story. The point of this website is to get some gigs doing a specific thing that I'm offering, right? So this restaurant owner analogy back to that, the chef opening the restaurant might love cooking all kinds of different, uh, cuisine types, but what's the restaurant going to be known for? You know, what's the cuisine there? Is it going to be a mix of things? It could be, but, or is it going to be known specifically for their Cajun food or whatever? Right? So that's what I recommend. This will really level things up because most musicians have this type of website that is like, I play guitar and I'll play anything, reach out to me for gigs. Also, I teach also, I play in all these bands. Also, here's my Spotify also blah, 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 blah. It just is not targeted towards anything. Whereas this you're thinking of who do you want to have go to the site? Your friends aren't going to care at all. That's not what it's for. The event planner is going to go to it and say, oh, this is what I need. Right. So you don't, you don't have to take it that far, but if you were like, no, I, I really want to do this and I really want to make some money doing this then. And, and I, I know that I want to supplement my income with this. Then you want to have that dedicated, very defined website. Even if you do a million other things, have it before that event planner that's looking for music. And when they see it, they know they want to hire you. Tip number 10, this one is, is a little atypical that most people don't do. So again, a lot of these, if you do them, you're going to be way ahead of the game. And that is to do a little reflection, debrief, a very, very intentional look back after every gig. And maybe after a long time, you don't have to do this once you have it, you know, figured out and dialed in, but especially early on, really think about it and even write stuff down and say, what worked? What did I like about this? What did I not like about this? And that's how you will have it shift into something that you're thriving with. Hey, you love spending your time. You love practicing for it. You're super excited about it. You can raise your rates because you're more professional, etc. So do a little debrief where you say what worked, what didn't work? What did I like? What did I not like? What could be better next time? What should I change? Etc. Etc. It's super simple. It's like a little sit down on paper and, and journal entry. I do recommend writing it down, but you'll learn so much that way. Otherwise, it'll just be like, oh, that was stressful. I'm glad it's over. And then the next time, you know, similar stuff might happen. Whereas if you just do that little bit of reflection, you're going to refine it and evolve and grow so much faster, and you're going to have a better time doing it. Because it's very, very possible for anybody playing music that again sounds even slightly decent to go, you know, do it professionally by here's the main takeaway that I said at the beginning, but it is the main takeaway by behaving professionally, every aspect of it behave professionally. And I'm going to say this part again, too, which is the funny catch is that let's say someone can like barely play, like they're just, they can make music. And it's like, they're just at that level. where like, okay, I think I could go try to do this publicly, but like, that's a real stretch. Okay. Well, if you jump into it and do that two years down the line, you're rocketing ahead, you know, in your skills. And again, becoming that kind of professional level sounding musician, because we prioritize first, just be, you know, providing a professional service. So that is the main takeaway. It's not about, you know, you're not releasing an album. You're not going on tour. People aren't paying money and tickets to sit and watch you play and say, wow, this is the best music ever. That's a whole different thing. We can talk about that stuff another time too, but we're just talking about gigs. 
background music gigs, um, I think is where it's at for specifically for events. So again, if you target your website towards saying, this is what I offer, then you're going to attract people looking for that. And as soon as you start playing any of them and you do a good job and you're professional, then you are attracting more of that from people who are there, from the event planners. They're going to say, whoa, okay, we need you. Like you're, you're solving a problem for someone when you show up and you're professional with music. And if you do it well, whoever booked you is going to say, whoa, that was so seamless for us. That was so easy. It was exactly what we needed. We're going to hire you again. I had a student email me a video link to them playing a gig at a restaurant with a trio using just the eight shell voicing shapes that I teach in my free PDF booklet called Any Jazz Chord. And that was so cool to see as a perfect example of this. They just said, okay, if I can play these eight shapes, I can play any jazz chord that comes up in the real book in lead sheets anywhere. And I can back up this singer and this bass player and just play the most basic chord. And they were doing it professionally. So that's a resource I'm so excited to be able to give away and to help people with, because if you can get you know, some simple stuff down, you can start playing professionally. So if you're interested in getting that, my booklet, Any Jazz Chord, it's a method on how to play literally any jazz harmony, any jazz chord that comes up in any jazz tune with only eight shapes. You can get that totally for free with the link in the description. It's a PDF for you. You can just download it there and start learning those and then play some jazz standards and try to get out there and play some gigs. By the way, those exact chord shapes, I loop them with my looper at gigs and then improvise over them and, you know, it doesn't take much if you are doing a little bit of improvisation and know a few shapes. So again, download that booklet if you're interested. I post a new lesson video every week. In fact, next week is my 200th lesson video in a row. 200 weeks in a row of posting a video on this channel every single Tuesday. So hope to see you in that lesson. I'll be talking about improvising over simple chord progressions, like a one, six, four, five chord progression with a bunch of uh, tips for how to do that and tell a story over a progression and sound really good. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.